When we talk about mechanical keyboards, we often think of manufacturers like Corsair or Razer, and for enthusiasts, brands like Vortex and Realtouch. But keyboards like these generally have an entry fee starting at 100 US dollars and can go much higher than that. So the question I've always wondered is, is it possible to get a comparable typing and gaming experience without the premium price? I think it might be. Hey guys, and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Tomoko MMC-023, also known as the i500. This keyboard is a fully mechanical 10 keyless keyboard that is currently on sale on Amazon for $38.99 and has even been priced as low as $30. The keyboard features blue style mechanical switches, end key rollover, includes a function layer with embedded media shortcuts, and even claims to be water resistant. Inside the box we have an instruction manual the keyboard itself, and a non-detachable USB 2.0 cable along with a keycap puller. But watch out, this type tends to scratch keycap surfaces. If you plan on swapping keycaps often, I would suggest using the wire style keycap pullers. I was pleasantly surprised when I first unboxed the keyboard. For the price, the construction is surprisingly solid. The ABS plastic feels sturdy, and the keyboard itself has a bit of heft that does add to the perception of quality. On the back side, we have two adjustable feet along with some rubber to keep the keyboard securely planted. If you happen to spill your drink on this keyboard, there are also three vents at the bottom that allow liquids to escape. The general look of the keyboard is pretty decent. It has a rather understated look, and some might call it generic, the only distinguishing design being the logo above the arrow keys. The only LEDs you'll find on this keyboard are for the caps lock and scroll lock keys. In my opinion, this is a good thing. There's a bit of flexibility where you can use this keyboard. There aren't any loud distracting colors and the case doesn't look like it's from a sci-fi movie. So the keyboard fits right at home on a gaming rig, but also fits right in with a more minimal setup as well. An often overlooked detail for users new to mechanical keyboards is a spacebar. Unlike Corsair or Razer keyboards that use spacebar that is 6.5 units long, this keyboard uses the standard 6.25. This allows you to customize your keyboards using a wide variety of keycap sets available if that's your thing. Construction aside, there's a reason this keyboard is priced so low, and one of the easiest places to cut costs are with the keycaps. The material is very thin, and when compared to higher quality keycaps like the one from GMK we see here on the left, the difference is very apparent. Since the material is thinner, the keys make a very loud and distinct hollow clack when the keys are bottomed out. Unlike other keycaps that are die sub or double shot, these legends are printed on and you can actually feel it under your nail, so don't expect them to last. Now you can't talk about a mechanical keyboard without talking about the switches. These are blue style switches from a company called Switchmaster, which you can probably tell are clones of the wildly popular MX switches from Cherry. But while they look identical, the experience is quite different. The first thing you'll notice is the actuation point is slightly higher than Cherry MX Blues. Not only that, but they're slightly stiffer as well. Using the ripple meter method, also known as the nickel method, the approximate actuation force is anywhere between 55 grams and 60 grams, which is slightly higher than the Cherry MX Blues 45 to 50 grams. As for the experience, after using this keyboard for a few hours to hammer out emails, along with another few hours of Overwatch, I can say that the experience was pretty good. Shocking actually considering the price. The keys on my unit felt consistent and responsive with all the feedback I come to expect from tactile switches. Alright, conclusion time. First off, I want to say that the fact that we can even get a full mechanical keyboard at this price point is amazing in itself. And to compare it directly with keyboards that have MSRPs at over $100 isn't quite fair, and that all we can really hope for is a comparable experience, and I feel like the Tomoko does provide that. It has a good and solid construction with the standard layout, a nice, simple design that doesn't look overly cheap, and of course, no weird 6.5 unit spacebar, allowing you to swap in different types of keycap sets. With that said, there are a few things that you need to keep in mind when purchasing a budget keyboard like this. The first are the keycaps. The quality is quite poor, but it's easy enough to add O-rings to prevent the keys from bottoming out. Another option is to completely replace the keycaps. Since the switches are MX clones, you have a large variety of keycaps to choose from. 
but because these switches are clones, the quality control and long-term durability may be a concern. However, overall with everything taken into consideration, I still found this keyboard to be absolutely fantastic and would highly recommend it for users on a budget. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out and I'll see you next time.